Okay, we are now going to consider the Dirichlet problem. We showed you the following weak formulation, uh, general weak formulation by using the Green's formula. Uh, and let us just repeat this. It's uh, given by this equation. So the weak formulation is generally on, on this form. But what's happening when we have the Dirichlet problem? That is, when we know that u is equal to zero on the boundary. In this case, uh, it turns out that it's um, enough to consider functions uh, phi, which are zero on the boundary. So uh, that means that the function uh, phi can be a member of w zero. This Sobolev space. Uh, in this case we have this boundary integral. Uh, this integral is taken along the boundary and note that phi is zero on this boundary so therefore the integrand here will be zero and um, we conclude that this integral will vanish and we end, uh, we end up with this integral, uh, or uh, this identity. Um, so the formulation of the Dirichlet problem takes the following uh, form. Find the unknown u, that is the solution, um, in w0, w0 or 1, 2 of omega, such that this equation is satisfied for all phi element in uh, this Sobolev space double w0 of 1, 2. And it turns out that this uh, formulation has a unique solution in... Uh, um, uh, it is possible to find a unique uh, u, a member of this space, which satisfies this. And unique means that if there are two different solutions, then these solutions must be uh, identical. If we now uh, call this guy, this integral, uh, you see that it's dependent of two uh, functions, phi and u. So we can call this function um, a of u phi. And on the, the the right hand side we can call this L of phi. Then we have a more general situation. Um, and we can formulate the problem in the following form. Find u element in w zero such that a of u phi or phi is equal to L of phi for all phi uh, in w zero. Um, this uh, function, which is function for, uh, a real function of two uh, variables, uh, two elements, u and, and phi, uh, this uh, function is called bilinear. And the reason why it's bilinear is the following, that it satisfies this identity. Um, it's linear if we have uh, u plus v in the first um, in the uh, in the first argument here, and w in the second. Then we can split this into a sum of two functions in the natural way. So it's linear in the first variable. That means also that. Uh, if we have uh, some constant k and multiply it with u, then we can bring this constant out of the function, like this. This is a normal definition of, of um, linearity. And the same takes place in the second uh, uh, argument. That's exactly what we wrote here, just that we have put it in the second argument instead. Um, and uh, we have this property uh, of this fu functional L, that L is 
is also linear so that L of u plus v is equal to L of u plus plus L of v. And if we have L of some constant k uh, multiplied with the function u then we can bring this constant out of the function like this. A natural question to ask is does this have a solution? And it turns out that it has a solution. Let us uh, just remark that there are many problems which does not have any solution. Just to give an example of this, take the, take the equation x squared plus 1 equal to 0. This uh, equation does not have any solution um, at least when x is a real number. Um, the reason for this is that if we try, uh, just write the, the, um, this function, a uh, graph of this function, it looks like this, and the, the, uh, the minimum point is at 1. So it's completely impossible that this function should be equal to 0. So this problem has no solution in, in the space of real numbers. Um, the um, Dirichlet problem has uh, a solution. The existence of this solution is going to... Um, we are going to focus on it later on by using the lux milgram lemma, but let's just, uh, just uh, show that the solution is unique. And in order to uh, prove this, we just uh, assume that we have two solutions, u1 and u2. And what is a solution? Well, yes, it is. Uh, it satisfies the following uh, um, the following equation for all phi in double Q one zero. Uh, actually, in double Q zero. So here we should have some zero uh, also on this space. So. Um, these two equations are satisfied because this is a solution and this is a solution. So why don't we just subtract these two equations? When we are subtracting it um, we get due to the linearity of uh, u1 uh, of this bilinear form A we obtain um, that uh, this difference can be written like this and by choosing phi equal to u1 minus u2 we obtain just this because this is going to be the case for all phi so it must uh, be the situation when phi is equal to uh, u1 minus u2 as well uh, and uh, just inserting this into the expression for the B linear form, we obtain that this is the case. Lambda is assumed to be a positive function, strictly positive function, so uh, we therefore conclude that the integral, the integrand here, um, and uh, particularly the square of the gradient of u1 minus uh, u2 must be equal to zero and when the gradient is equal to zero then we must have a then th this argument must be constant and when it's constant then u1 minus u2 is a constant and this means that u1 must be equal to u2 due to the fact that u1 and u2 are equal to zero on the boundary so this gives that we have a unique solution. u1 must be equal to u2. That's the definition of a unique solution.